So far, I've only watched the anime and I can already tell you with 100% certainty, Makima is both bad and bad news. Ain't no way a normal woman would hug a random, devil's not covered, tool and full display man in a dark warehouse. Although, it's not like there are any normal women in the show to begin with, so we'll have to talk about why that is and what's the deal with some of their messages. Hello comrade, my name is Machis. Come, get yourself a beverage and sit down with me. We got some explaining to do. You've heard me right. I did my best to avoid spoilers about anything major. Which means that everything I might speculate will come out of my own not-so-innocent mind and won't ruin any of the grand reveals. Except it will, because Makima is not a fucking human and I have serious proof to support these allegations. First of all, she stands out from the crowd. Well, so does anybody who has a name in Yu-Gi-Oh, but hear me out. Anime characters are known for their eccentric appearances, unnatural hair colors, weird ass proportions, and it's all done to emphasize personality traits or to create a unique, memorable persona. However, if you pay attention to people in Chainsaw Man, you'll realize they all look unnaturally normal, with mostly black hair, regular pupils, etc. The only ones who look, um, creative are devils, and you must be seeing where I'm going with this, so there is no need to elaborate. Secondly, her entire behavior. It's unsettling to say the least, and not I'm going to kill you if you disobey me kind, more like I'll take your innocence with a strap on, which she most likely owns. I know it's a popular fake, yet it's quite a believable one nonetheless. <clears throat> Unlike Aki's monotone and emotionless demeanor resulting from an irreparable psychological trauma, she sounds almost fake, like a retail customer service employee seven hours into a holiday shift. Go fuck yourself. On top of that, she has this smile that was only broken a few times and boy does her real expression pack a punch. No wonder Paui shut up real quick after getting a glare from her. Speaking of which, the way Makima manipulates everybody and manages if not orchestrates certain events is straight up featured in the intro. Look at this snail she feeds to Denji. It's not on shrooms, it's infested with Leucochloridium paradoxum, a type of parasitic flatworm that turns its snail host into a bait for birds, who are the end goal for them. It's remarkably similar to what's happening to our woofer, since he is given a carrot on a stick that leads him towards whatever she's after, making Makima not only a devil, but a master baiter as well. Then there are her powers. I can go on about how it looks like she's forming individual contracts with prisoners to trade their life for the death of a specific person, but this exact moment here is what sold it to me because it reminds me of how the snack devil just poofed out of reality in an instant. It was very eerie and otherworldly, which is basically the definition of any supernatural creature. Finally, the most important piece of evidence I have is this primal urge to call her a devil mummy from the minute I've seen her, which forced me to get to the bottom of this cause my god has never failed me before. Uh, not since my last visit to Taco Bell anyway. On the topic of kinky stuff, have you ever wondered why all the girls in this show are a bit on the Looney Tunes side? And I don't mean cartoons, I'm talking about 50 shades of batshit crazy. Uh, Alright, Himeno is probably the chillest of them so far, with the exception of misperforming the sixth step of CPR twice and proposing a sexual interaction to a minor. Moreover, she literally kidnapped him without anybody trying to stop her, and this quote-unquote dominant attitude is thanks to our dear author Tatsuki Fujimoto. According to an interview between him and Samura Hiroaki, mangaka behind a long-running Blade of the Immortal and a few other ones, he is into some serious shit. During their dialogue, Fujimoto said, I also like domineering and irrational women. In college, there was this girl who was mean to me, and one day at school, my bicycle has fallen over. I was wondering what happened when she said, I knocked your bike over, ha ha ha. I was so happy. Samura replied, <laughs> she was into you, wasn't she? No, not at all, but I really like girls like that. Somebody once told me, if you want a peaceful life, don't stick your dick in crazy. I took that statement to heart. I don't stick it in anyone really, but that's beside the point. Chainsaw Man, with Denji in particular, is Fujimoto's self-insert and nobody will tell me otherwise. Makima is into controlling, power is completely unhinged, Himeno likes to force stuff like cigarettes, kisses and whatnot. I can't wait to see what else he has in store for us. In addition to questionable character traits, some of you might have noticed that their world is a bit different from ours. 
technology is a bit older, cars are from a few decades back, and Mafia dudes were talking about the Soviets. We have a case of alternate timeline here. No shit Sherlock, there are six titied scrotums with other devils running around, which made me think. Why is America's pride and joy considered to be the scariest one? Hmm, what can be something you're actively afraid of and is worse than guns? Nuclear weaponry comes to mind. What about war in general? Surely it's worse than just firearms. This is probably the only thing about Chainsaw Man I got to know outside watching the show. The year is 1997 and that's why we have the aesthetic from that time. Well, it's due to Fujimoto liking American movies from mid to end of the 20th century, but you know what I mean. If the Soviet Union is still a thing, we can say that the First World War has indeed happened, because it was one of the factors that caused the Russian Revolution, and it goes back to my original question. Where is the war devil? I can tell you with unquestionable validity, gun fear would be akin to a fart in a hurricane next to the sheer terror of poisonous gases, flamethrowers, and white phosphorus. How bad can these things be? I've read that some soldiers straight up refuse to use white phosphorus ammunition because their enemies will use it in retaliation and that everyone is fucked. I fundamentally do not believe there wasn't a devil related to that, and it either got dealt with somehow or lost its power over time since people didn't have any more wars, which is also unlikely as there hasn't been a single day of peace on the entire earth for like a millennia or two. Okay, we strayed a bit too far from the show, so let's go back to one of its most confusing scenes. Aki versus the flower shop. He was getting his ass handed to him, uh, pun unintended, when all of a sudden, it just stopped, gave him a smoke, and lost its head for the second damn time. I can't tell you for sure how it survived or what contract it formed with Akane, but the interaction with Stop Not can be easily explained. Number one thing is the ghost devil itself. If there's one thing that all ghosts are about, it's the unfinished business, and the only business Himeno had at that time was to protect her husband. So it's reasonable to assume that Arms for Days will honor their previous contract, plus her dearest wishes, even post-mortem. Number two, right before she died, Himeno offered everything she's got in exchange for everything the devil had, which can be interpreted as a fusion between the two. Not Denji and Pochita type hybrid, kinda the other way around, when a human becomes part of the devil. And if we consider everything literally, that would include memories, feelings and other things that are now part of this supernatural creature. It would explain why it pulled booby grabber's cord like it did in the hotel, and why it randomly froze to give Aki a cigarette as well as some breathing room. I swear that was not intentional. To sum up, Himeno's final thoughts and will overpowered Akane's control, stopping the devil's assault, at which point he remembered that the ghost can't see shit other than the one in your pants and got it decapitated with little to no issues. Now, I can't possibly blue ball you by not explaining the easy revenge tax, so let's wrap things up on a bit of a bittersweet note. It is not a secret that these two developed a very strong relationship. Not exactly romantic, but they were certainly one of the most important people for each other. And to fully understand this message, we have to break it down and look into their respective stories. One half of it is related to their shared habit of smoking, which is an interesting development in and of itself, because Aki refused to smoke due to him being underage and not willing to jeopardize his health, until he started to share Himeno's point of view where life is too short to worry about this kind of stuff. Smoking allowed them to deepen their bond, and it will always remind Aki of her, hence why it was written on a cigarette. The other half is the text itself, and it refers to our dude's goals. She is perfectly aware of his desire to kill the gun devil for murdering his family, so she keeps telling him to loosen up or it will end very badly, since the only agents who survive for a long time are the ones who don't give a damn. However, it is easier said than done, and after her death, Aki descends even deeper into depression, adopting the ends justify the means mentality. That's where easy comes into play. Remember when Himeno was taking shit from a relative of her old partner? Top Knot said that this is not gonna fly and followed that woman to stick a gum on her clothes. It was so petty and random that it immediately lifted Himeno's spirits to the point of laughing her ass off 
and this is exactly what she wants for Aki. Because the girl knew for the fact that if she died, his psyche would go down the drain just like it almost did for her. So, in combination with the ghost devil shenanigans that we talked about, Himino was able to send her last words like a lifesaver to a drowning person. Chill the fuck out. Life is too short to be stuck in the past and you should continue walking forward regardless of all the shit you encounter. Take it easy with the revenge. Do something silly, laugh it off and move on. That is Himeno's final message and I couldn't agree more. It was I, Mahis, being philosophical into the microphone. Check out Discord and Patreon in the description if you like. Otherwise, have a great whatever time of the day you have. Until next time, cheers.